Okay, so let's look at some homomorphic encryption. So what I intend to do in this little tutorial is to show you how you would code a method such as the Paleo method into Python to be able to demonstrate how it works. So with homomorphic encryption, what we have is that it's possible for us to take cipher values. So in this case, we have our original values and we convert them to cipher values. So the advantage with uh, homomorphic encryption is that we can actually operate on them. So in the case of Paleo, we can actually do an additive operation and then we'll get a result. And again, the result will be ciphered so that although Eve is processing uh, the values here, she won't be able to tell the values that we're working with or the result. So what we do is that we generate a public key and a private key. So the private key uh, is kept secret. So with the public key, we cipher the values and then we can operate on them. And then to find out the result, we use the private key to be able to decrypt the, the values. So in this way, we keep the values secure as long as we can uh, store, we can keep the private key secret. So let's have a look at the basic method. So I've taken this from the Wikipedia page and you can check it out. Uh, I think it gives quite a good explanation. And then what I've done is I've coded this into Python that we'll see in a little minute. So initially what we do is we take two uh, prime numbers, large prime numbers, P and Q, and then we multiply them together to give us N. This is a value of n here. What we're trying to do is to create a public key and a private key. So the public key is n and g, so n is one of our factors. And it should be difficult to be able to factorize that back into the p and q. If that can be done, then our cipher is cracked. And then we're creating a, pri a private key, a decryption key of lambda and mu. So lambda is calculated by the lowest common multiplier between p minus 1 and q uh, minus 1. Then we select a g value, which is uh, within the multiplicative group uh, of integers modulo n squared. So I'll explain that in a little minute uh, there. If we pick the wrong value here, then we won't actually get our cipher working correctly. Next, what we do is we calculate the value of mu, which is the L function. So L is take the value and then take, take minus 1 and divide by n, uh, whatever the value of n is. So this is the function here, uh, g to the power of lambda uh, mod n squared. Then we're going to take the n, we calculate that function here. And then what we'll do is we'll take the inverse mod in the inverse of this mod n. I'll show you how that uh, is calculated in a little minute. So after that, we should have hopefully our public key and our private key. So we would cipher our values with a public key and would decipher them back with our private key. So next, we take our message and we take a random number r up to n. And then we compute g to the power of, of m and r to the power of n. And we take that as mod uh, of n squared. After this, we then, then decipher it with the l function, which is this function here. Uh, and mod, uh, we take the value, the x value of c to the power of lambda mod n squared, take that l, and then we multiply by mu, and we'll take the mod of n. Okay, so all looks very complicated, but let's see how Python cracks this. Okay, so here's an example. So in the code, I've left in that g can be an incorrect value, uh, and I'll explain what that is in a minute. But g needs to be relatively prime to n squared, which means that g cannot share a factor in n squared. So we take a value of p is 43 and q of 41. It gives us an n value here. And then the g value selected is 55 here. So this becomes our, our public key. 
and then we calculate lambda uh, based on those values that we've we've uh, created them and our mu and that becomes our private key we shouldn't share that we take 10 we cipher it and we decipher it. it's fine and i've also included that we take a cipher of two the value of two and add the two ciphers together and decipher it and we get a value of 12 back which is which is correct okay so that shows the basic operation so what we'll do is we'll have a look at uh, at this in operation okay so here's it here so i'll take a value of 10 there okay so the great thing is is that we've managed to to get one that doesn't work so i'll, I'll explain this in a little minute but here the g value is 86 remember 86 and we see it doesn't actually work so i'll try again 86 is the value that doesn't work so if we try again then it works now so g is relatively prime to n squared and the values work so we get 10 that's a cipher and back again there that one works that one works okay so that's great so you can see it's working for lots of different values of uh, g and r just occasionally we get a value of g that doesn't work and i explain that in a little minute so let's look at the code so the code uh, we've got a couple of uh, standard functions gcd is the greatest common denominator between two values and lcd is the greatest common multiplier between two values so initially we'll create p and q to prime numbers and then we'll calculate the value of n we then calculate lambda as the lmc the lowest common multiplier between p minus one and q minus one and we'll go ahead and generate a random number g okay so this is where the problem comes in if we pick the wrong number here then it won't actually work so next what we'll do is we'll take this l function which remember was the the value minus one divided by n and floor it so it's g to the power of lambda n squared g to the power of lambda n squared then we take uh, the the l function that's minus one uh, divided by n and then we'll take the inverse and mod n okay so that's the l function there and then we'll take the inverse of l uh, mod n so if you're interested this is the inverse function that we've got uh, n to the minus one mod p is this little function in here okay so then what would what we've got now is our public key and our private key and the next thing that we do is that we re we calculate the cipher by taking g uh, to the power of n uh, mod n squared and multiply it by r to the power of n n squared okay so that's that little Bit that went on in uh, in here this is that g to the power of n r to the power of n and then mod n squared that gives us a cipher we can now operate on the ciphers with different values with, with an additive to decrypt we take the cipher we raise it to the power of lambda uh, uh, and mod n squared we take one away from it and then divide by n so that was that function here so there's a, that function there once we do that we multiply it by mu so there's the uh, there's the mu and we'll take the mod of n and the end and we'll get our message back okay so there's the example here so that works those are the, the values and then what i've done is i've taken a message of two ciphered that and then added it to, to the, the original message and what we should get back is a value of 12 just to prove that it actually works okay so this is the code here so i've tried to keep it nice and simple uh, so that it can actually illustrate it so we come back to this g thing so this g needs to be a member of this thing here uh, and what that is is, is that no values of g can share a common factor with n squared so if we go here we've got a little uh, calculator uh, for this okay so just find that so this is the multiplicative group for zn zn is the is the integer values up to n minus one uh, modulo n okay this is z star n is 
that there are no shared factors in the set uh, for our, our value. So 10, if we take that, 10 has the factors of 2 and 5. So we can't include 2, we can't include 5, we can't include 6 because it's 2 times 3, we can't include 8 and so on. So there are four values in this, in this set, 1, 3, 5 and 7. Okay, so some other examples uh, here. So uh, for 91, we can see here that 91 has a factor of 7 in it and also in 13. So we take out all the factors that are related to 7 and 13 and that becomes our set. So in the example n squared, I think is this value here. So let's compute that. And if you remember before, the value of 86 didn't work before. And there you go. So that, that proves that. So the values of G we could have picked up to 100 uh, are these. And we see that 86 is a shared value in N squared. Okay, so that's showing you uh, a basic introduction to homomorphic encryption and an implementation. Okay, thank you.